Everybody, Michael Richards here with Elite Athletic Performance, just uh, doing a couple of videos to knock out some of the frequently asked questions we have. Uh, basically, to go over in this video, I wanted to go over just what a daily, what what the daily checklist kind of looks like for athletes that come in. Uh, don't get overwhelmed by this list because not everybody is going to complete everything on this list every day. This is just basically everything that could possibly happen, and then we kind of check the boxes for what each athlete needs and go from there. So. Uh, but everybody that walks in has a little bit of soft tissue work to do while they're getting warmed up. That's kind of the first part of their warm up is to get on a foam roller, uh, get a baseball or one of our vibrating balls and lay on it and just basically get your mu muscles kind of loosened up. It's kind of like a not so great free massage to give yourself with a baseball or with a, like I said, a foam roller or something just to kind of get the, uh, uh, the, the fluids back in your muscles and get them uh, juiced up a little bit. I joke with the kids and tell them it's kind of like WD forties for WD WD forty for your muscles, right? That's kind of the way we look at it. Uh, next up, we got a dynamic warm up that they'll do, which is just basically to get a little bit of a sweat broke. It's very short, but it's very uh, effective, and kind of get their central nervous system woke up. Then this is where it can kind of split off and go a few different directions. So if the athlete is a younger athlete and they are they uh, want to want to take care of their arm, stuff like that, but they're not quite ready for the velocity program. Uh, what they'll do is a basic arm care uh, template, a little bit of wrist weights, maybe you know a lot of reverse throws, stuff like that. But basically, at this point, after that, they will go over and they'll do their arm care. They'll get that knocked out, uh, get that their, their little bit of throwing. Uh, they'll usually throw to the net and uh, just keep their arm in shape. Keep throwing. You know, there's nothing kind of long toss to the net and uh, then they'll have a very short post throw recovery that they'll do when they get done with that and uh, then they'll, which is which is basically letting their arm know that they're done and it kind of doubles as extra arm care work so uh, if that makes sense it's kind of like a it's a cool down if you throw uh, to let your arm know that you're done throwing and if you didn't throw it's just it's just the last half of the arm care routine hopefully that makes sense so after that, the younger kids, I mean, at, at, when they're young, they don't really have, and when I say young, I'm talking 13, 14. Uh, and when they're under 12, really all they do is a, what we call a reverse throw, and that's pretty much the only arm care they'll do. And then they throw, and then they just go hit, and we'll, we'll get their hitting work done. So once they get done with that, they'll have their hitting work to do, which is uh, we have a basic template that we'll start with, we'll watch them hit, and then we make adjustments from there. Uh, to you know to, to make changes if there's any drills that we need to add in or take away but basically they'll have about six drills that they're going to do one day uh, of the week they'll have heavier bats and some optional weighted gloves that they'll use and then the other day they'll have a, a, a heavy bat and then their gamer bat and a light bat and they'll kind of alternate between those it's a little bit more complicated than that but for this video that's a good enough explanation uh, they'll do that and they'll work through those six drills that way and uh Basically, we're building up uh, the bat speed, you know, not necessarily going too heavily in the mechanics. I'm not a big fan of that, especially at younger ages. We will do an assessment right off the bat to make sure, just kind of question the kid and the uh, parents if, to make sure that the kid makes good contact with the ball because if, the, if, if you know, really you have two pro or there's two ways to attack a person who wants to get better at hitting. Are they making contact with the ball and it's not good contact? or are they completely missing the ball? So you have to be careful with that when you're making those decisions. So what we'll do is just, we'll just make that decision and, and decide from there. Uh, you know, if they're not making good contact with the ball, then obviously it doesn't really matter if we build bat speed up or not. So we'll make those decisions and go from there. Once they get done with those, then the athlete will move on to the strength portion of their workout. And that can go a few different directions depending on what they did that day or if they are, uh, uh, they, they may have done something at school and they're completely exhausted. This is not a situation where we kind of cover our ears and cover our eyes and pretend that we didn't see what happened. That's not how you get better. That's how you get athletes hurt. And so we will go with the athlete over to the, te the whiteboard template where the workouts are written out and we'll discuss what they think they can get done for that day. And if they feel like they can, and, and I mean, I'm reading their body language the whole time. Uh, then we will basically do a pared down version and we'll kind of complement what they did at school that day uh, with some certain movements that I that, that, that 
really you can't get enough of that tr basically train the back side of the body that are really good complements to the squat, the bench press, and things like that that usually, and the power clean that usually happen in school. Uh, so then after that, they'll move to their cool down, uh, depending on what uh, they, what type of athlete we're dealing with. Basically, we have three modalities that we'll use for that. We have a, a, a mobility cool down, a hybrid cool down, and a stabilization cool down. And basically, when the athlete comes in, I'll put them in one of those three groups, and then we go from there. They, if if the person is like double jointed and highly flexible, then they don't need a mobility. They're already mobile, so stretching is no for them. So we put them in the stability group and it's just extra stability work. It's, it's not necessarily extra barbell strength work, but it's a lot of like single leg work and things like that that they can do to help them build a little extra stability. We really see that in the volleyball population that we have up here. Uh, a lot of the baseball guys that come in are right in the middle, which is actually where we want them. And so we're just trying to keep them there. So it's a mixture of mobility and stability. So uh, basically the main point of this video to get across is that we will build a plan for whatever the athlete's goals are. We'll build a plan for them and help them execute it. We'll, we'll supervise them after we teach them what to do. We'll supervise them while they do it, correct when we need to, let them kind of empower them uh, to uh, make some decisions on their own and learn their body and learn how to uh, make decisions in a, from a training standpoint on how they feel. That's very important as, you, as they age and as they become their own, uh, get a little bit older. If they go to college, uh, you know, they need to be able to take care of themselves and know when they're feeling bad, when they're feeling good, and how to make adjustments, and that's a way to empower them. Really, the only golden rule we have up here is that the athlete can't make a decision on their own as to what they're going to do for that day. You know, like, I always tell the guys, and I'm joking with them, but I'm really not, uh, you know, you're not qualified to make that decision yet. You know, if I go to their parents, I tell them, like, if I go to your parents' work, and I try to do what they do, I'm gonna make a fool of it, right? And that's kind of what's gonna happen if you come in here and try to make your own workout. It, it just doesn't work that way. If you have a goal that you are trying to accomplish and you don't feel like it's being accomplished with what we're doing up here, you need to talk to me about it. And so we can figure that out. There's a good chance that it is being accomplished and maybe you won't, don't fully understand how it works, but Maybe it's not, I could be wrong. I'm, wrong. I'm wrong a lot and I'll be the first one to admit when I am. So if there is something that we're missing, you feel like we're missing, you just gotta talk to us about it. You know, Don't try to go off on your own limb. Uh, the other thing that I forgot to mention up here in the strength area is sometimes athletes, it, they go, the practices run long, their coaches try to wear them out. The, some people get a hold of them and they think that the only time an athlete is getting better is when they're puking and when they're, you know, all that crap, which is, actually not true at all not even close but there are days that we will take this strength work and completely replace it with recovery work and that could be what we call recovery workouts which are like movement like low intensity but a lot of movement a lot of crawling a lot of uh you know just kind of mobility kind of stability work uh and then sometimes we'll we have recovery boots and and these things called mark pros that's electro stimulus we'll use those sometimes just basically it's a daily decision on a how we're going to attack them because the bottom line is we have to have them better tomorrow than they were today and that's uh, what we are trying to do what we're trying to get accomplished so hopefully that answers any questions you had about that